What's up guys? So this morning we're going to head out and go to Bledsoe Creek State Park for uh, a quick day trip. Um, it's uh, less than an hour from our house, so we're going to run out there and take a look at it and take you guys along with us as we go. So we'll see you there. So we're finally loaded up and we're headed out to Bledsoe Creek. And on the way, I was actually going to talk about a little bit of the historical significance of Bledsoe Creek State Park. Bledsoe Creek State Park was a Native American hunting ground which saw plenty of wildlife thanks to the salt lick in the area as well as the presence of a river. The first pioneers moved in in 1765 were called long hunters. These men would spend months away from home in hostile territory to hunt and trap. Isaac Bledsoe was one of these long hunters. Bledsoe built a fort which was nothing more than a rudimentary protection for homesteaders. The fort would soon be overrun by Native American Indians and the second fort would be built after Bledsoe's death. This fort was on the location of Bledsoe Creek State Park. When Tennessee became a state in 1796, this area became known as Cairo and grew into a wealthy town thanks to the industry along the river. Bledsoe Creek State Park sits on 169 acres nestled up against the backwaters of Old Hickory Lake. We finally made it, baby girl. Are you ready to be out of the car? After finding a restroom and getting settled in, we went off to find the stamp for our passport book. Tennessee State Parks have a passport book that you can collect a stamp from each state park that you've been in. This is something fun that we've been able to do with our daughter as we visit these parks. After we got our stamp, we drove down to the wildlife observation deck. Here we were able to see several types of egrets as well as turtles. Turtle. Yeah, turtle, turtle everywhere. It really is amazing how much wildlife and just biodiversity there is in just this one tiny area of land. We could have sat here for hours and just watched. Once we got through at the wildlife area, we headed out on the trail. There were several different options for us to choose from, each varying in its difficulty. Some of these were even paved and would have been wheelchair and stroller accessible. Here we run into a couple deer just relaxing right off the path. Hiking isn't the only thing to do at Bledsoe Creek. There's also plenty of kayaking, as well as a rental station where you can actually rent your own kayak with prior approval from the office. Once you reserve your kayak, you can get a code from the office to get a life vest and unlock your kayak from these stations here. This was awesome and something we'll definitely have to try out again. Let's Oak Creek has a interpretive center as well as a really nice playground for the younger kids. There's also two large pavilions that can be rented as well as a butterfly garden that can be observed. After a long day of hiking, it was time for lunch at one of the day use areas. After lunch, we went to the visitor center where we found my daughter's favorite part of the whole trip. One of the reasons my family loves traveling to our state parks is that there's history combined with natural beauty. And at Bloodstone Creek, the history even goes off of the state park into these other areas that you see here. State park maps are incredibly informative and can show you interesting sites such as interpretive trails, 
wheelchair and stroller accessible trails, and even exhibits such as these, the Long Hunter's Cabin, and an exhibit of what an early Indian camp would have appeared like. So if you're ever out hiking and you've got your map with you or you've got your phone with the State Parks app, the color of the trail marker coincides to the trail you're on here. So we're on Owl Ridge Trail right now, headed back towards the visitor center, and they've got a blue trailhead sign. So hopefully you've enjoyed coming along on our trip to Bledsoe Creek State Park. It was short, but it was just a day trip. But we did want to show you just some of the beauty that you can find when you visit Tennessee State Parks. If you haven't visited them yet, I highly recommend you go out, find the park nearest to you, and just go for a day. See what it looks like. You don't have to go camping or anything. Trust me, you'll be surprised that what you didn't know was in your own backyard. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day.